Hello everyone, I am Pratap and I welcome all of you to a wonderful class today. Maximum likelihood estimation. You study mathematics, you study statistics, you study actual science, you study data science, you study artificial intelligence. Whatever you study, maximum likelihood estimation is such a great concept. If you understand this one, your path will be very, very easy. I'm 100% sure if you attend the class till end, you will have absolutely no doubt about this. If you are a starter, just accept this as a formula. If you see here, probability x is equal to x written. That means this is a probability formula. And here if you see, that is equal to lambda power x e minus lambda divided by x factorial. So now we'll use this statistical formula. This is a model. This is a statistical formula. This will say something about future. This will predict future. How this will predict future? Taking the sample. If you have a sample, it will take the sample and it will predict future. Remember, I am talking about parametric statistics. Parametric statistics is the one where you will have fixed number of parameters. Here the parameter is lambda. Once the parameter is estimated, you get a formula from where you can find probabilities. And that matters. To find the probabilities, you need to know lambda anyway. So, we'll estimate lambda taking a sample. You see the sample here? The sample here, this is the sample. Now, this is the past sample. When we say this is the past sample, this is the way people turned up to this small. That means, if this is 25, suppose, 25, we have taken last 25 days record and we'll take this sample to predict the probability for future. That means, after a week, suppose you are talking about 15th of February. On 15th of February between 6 to 7 p.m., how many persons will turn up to this particular mall? If you want to predict that, you can and will do that in the next 10 minutes. Okay, let's get ahead. Now, I am using Desmos. It's an awesome tool. Okay, Desmos. You see, this Desmos.com. Okay, it's a calculator. Lot of variety of ways you can do. Now, I have written the Poisson distribution here. So this is the Poisson distribution e power minus lambda lambda power x upon x factorial. I have taken a for lambda. Now if you see here, this is given by the statisticians already. Okay, that means whenever there is a arrival pattern, the only thing you need to do here is to estimate the parameter lambda. Lambda is a here. Can you see? If I change a, the shape changes. This is what you need to do. This is what the pattern okay so in parametric formulas the parameter you need to estimate to estimate the parameter in today's class we'll use maximum likelihood estimation is maximum likelihood estimation the only one to estimate the parameter no ml is one of the ways but ultimately using mle you will be able to estimate the value of lambda not calculate estimate the value of a here out of all these patterns here for different values of a let me pick one or two patterns. Suppose I will pick two here, this graph, and then I will pick another one, five here. Okay, let's see. You need a little patience. Okay, so instead of taking all, I've taken here only two. Okay, so what I did is I took lambda here two and I took lambda here five. So now this is the formula. Here, lambda is a parameter. I have taken lambda 2 and I found all the probabilities here. Okay. Use a calculator, find all the probabilities. And then you can draw a graph. This is the graph. I use Python programming. If you want, you can use R programming or any, any such tool. You will be able to get the graph. What is the usefulness of a graph? You will know in one minute. Okay. So now I've drawn this graph. How about lambda is 5? I got these probabilities here. I got these probabilities here. And then... I drew a graph. Okay. I got this graph. Now, if you were to choose one of these two, suppose I will say you pick two or five. These are two choices for you. So, which one you will pick? Although final lambda is neither two nor five, but it's close because now there are infinite number of choices of lambda because decimal points are also there. So, it will be difficult for you without using any such method like MLE. Okay, so I've given you two values, which one you will choose. 
of course you will see the sample the past sample so what we are doing here is we are trying to predict future we are trying to say something about future taking past sample okay now see my past sample is here so if you see this one mostly i get five five many times i get that means on most of the days five people turned up during that hour 6 to 7 pm five people they turned up more times and then the next best is four four and five okay and six three times seven three times 10 people turned up to that mall only on one occasion out of 25 sample we have taken so now which one will use of course the second one if you see the second one here if you see the second one here this is four and this is five so four five maximum comes here and if you see this one three and uh, this is eight okay eight how many times two times here okay so still there is something so if you consider this graph this graph is able to pick this pattern in a better way as compared to this graph because in this graph if you see here these are the values okay this is one this is two one many times you have two many times you have but in the sample you don't have one many times and two many times so if i will give you to pick up one and to choose one between these two of course you will go with this one because you want to predict something which should satisfy the past now what i want is i want to find the probabilities i want to find the probabilities of all these values i want to find the probabilities of what has already happened what i want now is i want the probability of this one 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 I want the probability of this one. I want the probability of this one. I want the probability of this one. I have to estimate lambda in such a way. I have to estimate lambda in such a way that if this is my formula, again, if you are wondering why we are taking this, there are so many. Again, why this formula? I am not going to that. If you are interested, I can make another video for this. But we are studying ml in today's class okay how to estimate lambda so we have taken this formula now probability of happening all this should be maximum that is maximum likelihood estimation now let me write probability of each one probability x0 that is the first one how many are there only one and then probability of x1 how many are there there are there is only one then i will write probability x is equal to three there are two i have to write twice then i have to write probability x is equal to four probability x is equal to four how many times i will write i will write four times five times i have to write five times okay i have to write five times how many five occurred five times and how many times six occur three times that way i will write all the probabilities i will write all the probabilities here so my formula is already fixed i can change the formula what i want is i have to go with this formula however in this formula my choice is to take that value of lambda to get that value of lambda for which the happening of this is maximum the happening of this is maximum okay I will take that value of lambda for which the happening of this is maximum because this already happened. So if, if we produce a formula which will not satisfy our past, how can you use that for future? Okay. If we have a formula which is not satisfying the past, whatever has already happened, if it is not satisfying that, how can we use that formula for the future to predict something? Don't you think there will be mismatch? If you are not still satisfied, I'll give you an illustration. Okay. Now, for a moment, you forget statistics. Suppose, suppose on the first day, I have a shop and I got 10 customers, okay? I have a shop and first day, I got 10 customers. Second day, I got 20 customers. Third day, I got 30 customers. And now, 
I asked someone, how many customers will get tomorrow? How many customers will come to my shop tomorrow? Okay. And if there is an expert, he says, you can use a formula like this. F of X is 10X. And you can find from this. Then what I will do is, I will use 4 here. And then I will multiply here. And I will know that 40 customers will come tomorrow going by this pattern. This is a completely mathematical pattern. There is no variation. There is no random variation. So it will not be practical to apply. But anyway, this is mathematics. So what we are saying here is mathematically, we can find a formula. We can find a formula which will take the previous pattern. So this is the formula which is taking the previous pattern to say, suppose that guy says instead of 10x, that guy says you take 90x. I will definitely not take this advice because 90x if I take, my answer will be 90 multiplied by 4, that is 360. F of 4 will be 360. I will not take this advice. I will not buy this idea just because this formula is not satisfying the past. When I put F of 1, I should get 90. If I put F of 2, I should get 180. If I put F of 3, I'm getting something which I didn't get. Okay. So, I have to take this formula. See, mathematically, I'm saying, if somebody says, estimate the value of A, estimate the value of A for which this function, you can apply for the future, and it should take the past pattern, then definitely, I will, I will go with A10, not 90, right? This is mathematics. Now, go to our original equation. See, I left you here. I left you here. So now this formula, I'm not finding a formula. Remember, I'm not finding a formula. Now what I'm saying is, we have to find we have to find that value of lambda for which the happening, okay? The happening means the future happening of these because this way the people turned up to my center. The happening of all these should be maximum. That is maximum likelihood. We'll estimate that one. Maximum likelihood estimation. Okay. Again, there's a difference between estimation and estimate. I'm not going to that. This is the formula. We have to estimate lambda. Now, when I say the happening of all these probability x0, probability x1, probability of x3, probability of x3 once again, four many times, all, and I'm saying x0 and x1 and x3, I'm not saying all. So you have to multiply all these probabilities. You have to multiply all these probabilities. Okay. And you have to find the maximum value of this. That's all. You have to find that value of lambda for which the product of all should be maximum. This is our task. Now our task is to maximize L. Okay. To find the maximum value of L. And we'll see what is the value of lambda that will maximize this L. Okay. We'll find that. Now my likelihood here is probability x is equal to x1. Probability x is equal to x2. And then probability x is equal to xn. Now that the formula is fixed, we will write e power minus lambda. Actually, e minus lambda, lambda power x divided by x factorial. You multiply for all. It will be e minus lambda, lambda power xn. This is x1 divided by xn factorial. And then L will be e power minus n lambda. Lambda power x1 plus x2 plus xn. I can add summation xi divided by divided by all these factorial. They will not contribute, okay? Because we will find max value. I will take log. If I take log, log of first one will be minus n lambda. Now let me take a is summation xi and b is all the factorial, x1 factorial, xn factorial, this b is not required. So if I take log l, my log l will be minus n lambda. And if I take log here, this will come here. It will be a log lambda minus log b. Now if I take differentiation, okay? Differentiation of lambda, sometimes out of fear, we write del by del l or del by del lambda, okay? Partial differentiation because we want, uh, 
to see the change, the variation according to lambda. Okay. Anyway, will not worry. Here you will get uh, minus n differentiation. Here it will give you a divided by lambda. Here this is zero. Now you put this is equal to zero. Okay. If lambda will be equal to a divided by n. So what is a? That is summation xi. Summation xi by n. That is nothing but x bar. Now if I go back, if you do this one in the similar way, finally you will get the value of lambda and our lambda will be equal to lambda will be equal to summation xi divided by n. You can check this, okay? 140 I got here and n is 25. That means I got 5.6. Now we'll try to interpret this result, okay? Now I accepted this result, okay? This result I accepted and I've taken 5.6 and I'm saying, I'm saying to the world, you see, you have to use this formula for that mall. If you want to predict for future, I've taken the sample pattern and I got this formula. And I can assure you that this will work the best because in that formula, 5.6 is the optimum value. That means if you take any value of lambda other than 5.6, it could be 2, it could be 5, it could be 1, it could be 50. If you take any other value of lambda, then the probability of happening all the past will not be maximum because we want a formula we want a formula which will maximize our own happening whatever has happened that should be maximized right now there is a very important point can you mark this is our past data you remember zero occurred only once one occurred once but as i already mentioned you four five times we got in our data and five also five times this is our past Frequency distribution. This is called frequency distribution. How about future? But remember, this is so important for you. The future probabilities are no more close to the past. Okay, if you co compare this and this, they are far away. Then how you are right? Yes, we are right. Because this is a very, very important concept. Remember, always we get past in total form. That means if you count everything, this total will be 25 here. However, you count all these, the total will be 1 here because this is probability distribution. What is very important for you to recognize that always when we say probability distribution, we divide 1. That means the total sum will be 1. Okay. Here the total sum will be 25. If you want to compare this one, this one, that's not possible. If you want to write expected frequency, and you want to compare, then you have to multiply every probability with 25. If you multiply each probability with 25, then the total will be 25. Now you can compare one by one. You compare this one and this one, 1 and 1.22, yes, they are close. 2 and 2.22, they are close. 3 and 3.1 and they are close. 3 and 4.101, uh, they are close. So we are getting close values, okay? So, so now we accepted that if this is the past, this is the future. We accept it. Okay. This is future probability distribution and this is future expected frequency. You can say directly expected frequency. It's done. Okay. Today's class is done. Is MLA done? No. We have just started. There will be a series of classes. I hope you will follow and you learn MLA properly so that there will be no problem for you in the future. Now, finally, those who have doubts, why I've taken log like you why i have taken logarithm before taking the differentiation this is the answer mathematically it's proved that you take logarithm or you don't take logarithm you will get the maximum at the same point remember we are not interested in the maximum value of this function this is just an example in likelihood we are not interested in the maximum value of the likelihood we are interested at that point where the function will attain maximum value so if you see the graph, I've taken a graph, x power 3 minus 8x power 2 plus 12x plus 20. And I've taken log, the second one that is in red, the first one that's in blue. So the same function I've taken log in the second one and you see the graph here. If you see this graph, this is kind of flattened because I've taken log. So it's very easy at times to find the differentiation and to find the value of x at which differentiation is zero. That is the reason we're taking log likelihood. 
taking log is not mandatory, not compulsory. If you don't want to take log, directly you can find that value of x for which differentiation will be zero. Again, these are the points where you might have a maximum or minimum, right? So for that, ideally, you should find the second derivative and check whether it's negative or not. That I, I, I skipped in today's class, okay? I hope you understand. This is the point on x axis where you are getting the maximum, this point, okay? This point, you see, I drew one line, black line, okay? If you see the red curve, the maximum is attained at this point. And if you see the blue curve, and if you see the above blue curve, there also we are getting maximum value, okay? So the point is important. So whatever curve you take, whatever function you take, it doesn't matter, okay? So this is the graph, see the maximum here that is attained, if you see the point here, it's around, I think uh, one, okay? It's near one, this is the maximum. Here we are getting maximum, here also we are getting maximum, okay? Because you are not interested in the function, it doesn't matter whether you take log or not. That is what I wanted to clarify.